Hey guys, long time no see. I hope you're all doing awesome. I would like to officially welcome you to Halloween season 2016. As you can tell, I'm a day late, but we're gonna try and crank out as many videos as we can this month. So I hope you're ready and I hope I'm ready. And I also wanted to let you know that all lenses that you're gonna see this month will be provided by Samhain Contact Lenses and all of their info will be down in the description. So please feel free to check that out if you are interested. I've got my black sclerosis in for this look. And then for my base, I use the Makeup Forever Step One Hydrating Base as well as the Smashbox Photo Primer, the Kat Von D Locket Foundation in the shade Light 45, and then the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. And I like to apply that foundation with the Real Techniques Expert Face Brush. So far that's my favorite. I don't like using it with the Beauty Blender, so this guy is it. I'm starting out with one of the NYX Micro Brow Pencils to outline the shape of my face and also the drips. You could take this line in a little bit further if you wanted to see more of your natural skin, or you could also do just a piece or like half of your face as well. I started the drips about halfway across my forehead and then I realized, oh, well, I should have covered my brow. So if you want to see how I do black out my brows, I'll have the video linked up in the corner as well as down in the description. And for the drips, I wanted to make them look a little more like waxy drips rather than something smoother like ice cream. Or if you want something a little different, you could always use more jagged lines to create more of a ripped effect. Then I'm using a sort of a toned down desaturated blue green, which is mixed from white and black and a little bit of a green and light blue. And these are water activated paints. So with just a little bit of water, they'll mix together really easily. And I'm just applying this all over inside of that line we just created. And I'm not going for something super opaque and pretty and nice here. So I'm just kind of stippling that on and blending it out unevenly so it looks kind of splotchy. And you could also use more of a contrasting color or brighter color here if you want something that will pop a little bit more against your skin tone. And then to contour, I'm starting out with a warm kind of light to medium shade and I'm just applying that to all the areas that I would normally contour. But I do want to make it a bit heavier than usual. Now I'm going to go in with a reddish brown to intensify all those contours. Then I went back to that brush that had my base color on it just to tone down some of the areas where I had blended it out too far. Continuing with that same color, I'm going to apply that to the lid and blend it up into the crease. I'm also taking this color underneath the eye, starting out by just blending it across the lash line and then I'm also on this side taking it down into kind of a diamond teardrop shape, just very subtly. And then on the other side I'm going to do the same, have the same idea, but I didn't want to make it symmetrical so I'm bringing two points down on that side. Focusing the most product up near the lash line and then fading it out as I blend down. And then I'm also going to blend that color into the top of the nose contour and then kind of up into the brows. I'm then taking a brown gel pencil liner. This one's from NYX. And I am just very messily applying and smudging that to the lid. Again, blending it up into the crease, leaving really messy edges. And then we're going to intensify that color using a chocolatey brown matte eyeshadow. And I am going to focus most of that shadow again near the lash line. And to blend that out, I'm using more stippling motions rather than swiping or windshield wiper motions to give it more of a smudged, almost like an inky kind of feel. I'm then using a black eyeliner to tight line and really black out that top lash line. And I'm using this for the lower water line as well. And then for the lower water line only, I'm taking a matte black eyeshadow and very carefully packing that over top of the eyeliner to help keep it in place and from fading, especially if you have more watery eyes. So now I'm going back in with the dark brown and placing that over top of where we applied the previous color. The main things to think about for this look are to start out with very little product and use a very light hand and then gradually work up your layers of colors, which is what I'm doing here. I'm going in with the brown and then if I want to warm it up a little bit more, I'll go back in with that warm brown 
and then I'm also adding in some black. And again, I'm using very light pressure and stippling motions rather than swiping. I'm also taking a little bit of the black and applying it just along the base of the top lash line. I also decided to take just a very small amount of that dark brown eyeshadow and apply it at the back of the cheek contours and then I'm going in with my foundation color and cleaning up and defining some of those shapes that got muddled up when we were blending out our eyeshadow. Then I'm setting that with some translucent powder to keep it in place. Now we're getting into the shading around the inside of that outline we first created and I'm going to be using all three of those same colors that we used on the eyes. You could get away with just using the brown. I just like having the different layers and tones of colors in there. It is a bit time consuming to use all three colors to shade all around. So if you are running low on time, I would recommend going in with the darker kind of chocolatey brown and then do your black outline. But here I'm starting with that lighter warm brown, applying it around the inside edge of that line and then using a clean blending brush to blend out the edges. And then we're going to move on to the darker brown. We want to focus the darkest, most intense parts of our shadows right against that line and then also between the drips. And then once I get to the black, I'm taking that on a detail brush so I can get that right up against that line since that's where we want the deepest, darkest parts of the shadows. Once we're done with the black, I'm going back in with my foundation and again, just cleaning up some of the edges. I'm then going back in with that lighter brown on a detail brush and I'm creating some very subtle lines around the outside of our outlines. So on our regular skin tone. And I'm doing this to create a little bit of dimension so it's not just a totally flat piece of skin. I'm using the brush to line it out and then I'm just using my finger to blend and fade the lines out. I'm not creating just one even line around the entire shape, rather breaking it up a little bit and creating several lines. As you can see, I've started with my black outlining and what I'm doing for this is lining in small sections and then while the paint is still a little bit wet, I'm going in with a small smudge brush to blend out that paint a little bit. So that's going to give us an even more intense shadow. As I was doing this, I was looking at it and I decided I wanted to make those shadows even more intense and bring the black out even further so that there would be more separation between our natural skin tone and that green color. So I mainly did that around the jawline and then also between the drips and just under that top piece on my forehead. So this is what it ended up looking like with all the black applied and blended out. And now I'm just applying a little bit of black mascara to my top and bottom lashes. I'm not curling them or anything, I just really wanted to black them out. Then I'm just quickly penciling in the natural shape of my brow using one of the NYX brow pencils. This one's in the shade black. And then I'm brushing through to distribute the color and using a clear brow gel to set the hairs in place. For the lips, I'm using Jeffree Star's Dominatrix and I am overdrawing a bit on the top 
and I'm also making the cupid's bow pretty intense. And while I wait for that to dry down, I'm going in with a white body paint to add some highlights. And I'm doing this on the drips where they go out and then come back in where I would want it to look a little bit more raised. And I'm applying that with the brush and again using my finger to tap that out to make it a little less intense. And then I'm also applying this around the outside edges. And then for really no reason at all, I added some of the white body paint to the parts of my forehead that weren't covered in anything, just to add a little bit of variation in the color, I think. I don't know. I just felt like it. So now that the lips are dry, the last thing we're going to do is add some rusty orange kind of shimmery eyeshadow to the center of the lips. And I'm just going to blend that out to give a highlight to the lips. And I'm also going to use my finger to blend the brown back in onto the eyeshadow. And that's going to do it for our first look of Halloween 2016. So I hope that you guys enjoyed and feel free to subscribe if you're not already. And hopefully I will see you tomorrow.